Today I want to show you how to filter honey. Hello, I'm Griffey, so I'm going to win in Griffey. Here we talk everything beekeeping, farming, countryside living, and we do reviews as well. Now we are in the honey house, as you can see, fresh stack of supers behind me to extract. Now today we are talking about filtering honey, and this is a video to follow up from my mini series of the kit that I've got in this honey house. Now, this is arguably the most important tool in the honey house. I'd say more important, before you spend more money on a better extractor, make sure you've got a honey sump first. Now basically, the honey sump, if you don't have one, you're gonna filter everything through settling tanks and strainers and from one tank into an X with a, with a strainer in between. Now that is a huge bottleneck in any honey operation. When I was a, a small scale beekeeper, that's how I used to extract honey. I tip it into a settling tank with, a, with a, a, a big filter on, then tip that from that center into another tank with a more finer filter, and then again before I went through the final filter. So it took ages, but this honey sump system does it in all, or basically does 90% of the filtration. So basically, what is a honey sump? This is my sump. This is a, a licensed sump, electronically heated and we've got a spout out the back. Now this is set at 35 degrees. It can go up to 50, so I think the range is 20 to 50, something like that. But I tend to keep it around 35. If the honey was gonna flow through, uh, through this pretty quick, as I'm extracting, it's safe enough to bring that up to about 40, 45. As long as it, the honey doesn't sit on that temperature, it just flows straight through, then that's fine. So basically I've got it uh, set up on the table so gravity helps me out so we pour the honey from the buckets. So from the, the honey from the extractor, we take that honey and we tip it up into this container. Now we've got separate filters that the honey works through. So you can see if I grab a hive tool, not a hive tool, scraper, good scraper. We sell these on the website. So you can see this side, we've got basically a thick layer of wax that's been sitting here overnight. And you can see it's filtering out bits of bees, but mainly a large amount of bees wax up the top there. Into the next uh, bay, still a layer of wax, but if we pull that back, you can see there's a lot less wax in there. The first uh, baffle or uh, area takes the majority of it, then the wax gets a little bit better through another filter and a lot less wax. It's just basically a thin layer, a few mil thick on the top before we get into the honey. And then the last piece, hardly nothing. It's just the skim in here now. Lovely. Now, if I was gonna store this honey now for the winter or for, for future bottling, then basically we'll bucket this honey straight into a bucket and we'll seal it without this uh, filter first. So the honey is good enough to seal and it's good enough to sell to anybody in bulk if you go and do that. You don't need to filter this again if you're selling honey in bulk to say a packager or another beekeeper or someone who's gonna use it for an ingredient and they're gonna put the final filter on. If you're gonna jar that honey and you're gonna sell it as you know honey in a jar, then you do need to filter the honey once more from here. And I would recommend a 200, let me turn this around. A 200 micron Swinty filter. That's the filters we personally use at Queen and Griff. All the honey we sell in jars goes through that Swinty filter and we actually sell those filters on the website as well. Uh, 200 micron, that is basically the industry standard uh, when it comes to honey. If you filter honey more finely than that, you're just gonna take too much of the pollen and the goodness out of the honey. 
that is fail safe so if any you know bits of hair or anything uh, within the honey house goes in the honey that filter is going to catch it you know that is going to catch a, a, the the leg of a bee or a wing of a bee you know nothing is going to end up in the honey which you don't want so very important so basically that is it for the sump now even though we don't have a honey sump on the website yet if anybody does need to buy a honey sump we are agents for Swainty, Lega and Thomas as well as an L if you want anything priced up just send us a message on uh, email we can price up anything you'd want even if it's not on the website we can bring stuff into the country on an existing uh pallet load so you don't pay the shipping to get it into the uk so just put that out there now let's see how clear the honey comes out so if you look at the honey this is quite a dark honey we got running here today and that's basically all i've been getting this year so far is dark hawthorn honey much much darker than the type of honey we're used to but basically this is the system Super high tech, not using gravity. We turn the tap and then it slowly comes out. Look at that nice, lovely medium honey. And then starts to run through. lovely job now when you're filtering with the swanky system what i would recommend everybody buying especially if you're gonna be filtering you know a lot of honey is buy this now that actually fits inside the swanky filters and they are designed to take this so you're not going to melt that filter using this now that does speed up the process drastically just by keeping that honey just i say 30 35 degrees running through the system so we literally put this we'd fit it in there and that will just keep the honey very viscous and it will just run through perfectly so i would recommend everybody buying one of these if you're going to use the swanky filters and by the way we sell them as well and that's it that is filtering honey now it's the same kind of system doesn't matter how big of an extracting system you've got basically all the extracting lines they've got a honey sump built in like i mentioned i think it's the most crucial part of any kind of honey extracting system is to have a good sump one that is heated there's no point having a sump that's not heated you're wasting your time there it's got to be a heated sump because you've got to make that honey you know runny vis viscosus and for that to run through the system if it gets really thick it's just not going to filter and the wax will be stuck in it and what i would say about this sump this sump has done a fantastic job over the years but this isn't the best sump this has got uh electric cables inside that heat up when i change this sump i'm going to go over to a water heated one so it'll be a, a double tank full of water and have an element uh, to heat the whole tank i think that is a much more uh, better way to transfer the heat within the sump um this isn't the best one although it has done me very 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 well for probably seven years since i moved to the farm that's when i bought this sump so it's been with me seven years excellent service it hasn't broken down so in fairness to my son I, I can't knock this uh, honey sump even though in my opinion it's not the best one i can't uh, fault the way it's served me uh, for over these years and you know you're talking it's done tons and tons and tons over the years it's got a few more tons to do this year as well because we are well behind Ooh, look at that look at the color of that lovely 
Well, that's it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it and hopefully you learned something and you know maybe how you're gonna wanna filter your honey in the future. Now, a lot of uh, big bee farms, they'll actually have this on the floor. So the honey extractor actually runs directly into the sump. You don't need to carry buckets over and then they've got a pump on this side and they pump it out and they basically pump it into a septic tank. Something probably similar to this. This is a 200 kilo a uh, Carnegie tank and then the honey can settle there before you bucket it or pump it into barrels whatever uh, at the minute we can't handle barrels in this small room everything is uh, I guess put into buckets um, but yeah I don't think I've got anything else to say basically we'll scrape the wax out of this now throw that in the api melter put the api melter on and you'll be surprised how much more honey will actually just be sitting in the wax. And I think that will probably be the next video we do in here, talking about api melters and uh, taking the honey out of the wax and having wax uh, to sell or to create something out of. That's it. See you at the next one.